This is Valley News Live at 5. We be begin tonight with breaking news. We're now learning that a 18 year old missing autistic man has been reportedly has reportedly died. The Pembina County Sheriff's Office issued a silver alert last night to help find him. They told KFGO that Neil Kimel body was found today in the Tongue River, which isn't far from his home. He was last seen around 10 last night near a property about three miles north of Cavalier. Meanwhile, many of the eviction moratoriums across the country have expired, leaving residents with no place to go and no idea of what happens next. But in the Fargo Moorhead area, there are plenty of resources available. Valley News Team's Aaron Walling explains. Some eviction moratoriums have ended, which has led to an increase in evictions in the Fargo Moorhead area, according to Lakes and Prairies Community Action. So oftentimes that looks like an eviction notice, um, utility disconnect. According to Emma Schmidt, there has been an increase this month with people needing help, whether that's through utilities being turned off or needing somewhere to live. About twice as many people have um, called than the previous months, so definitely an uptick in people looking for assistance. There are many resources available. Homeless shelters like Gladys Ray and New Life Center are open. Groups that can help with rental assistance and those that are willing to give people a helping hand. People have been through a lot of trauma these last couple of years, especially. Um, so being able to help support and contribute to the community and um, help people get back on their feet is a privilege. The COVID-19 put a strain on renters and landlords and providers in the FM area are trying to connect those in need to the resources that can help. The real focus is on um, eviction prevention, trying to keep people in their homes um, and to get ahead of um, some of the evictions and also um, make the landlords whole too because we know that there are lots of landlords that haven't gotten their rent paid um, and we want to make sure we're connecting um, them with that resource too. In Moorhead, Aaron Walling, Valley News Live. For a full, full list of available resources, visit valleynewslive.com and just click on this story. The weekend is almost here, so if you plan on going out tonight, Nathan Hopper is here to tell us how the weather can impact your evening plans. Nathan. Yeah, hey, Nishay. Happy Friday, everyone. Thanks for joining us here on uh, Valley News Live at 5 o'clock. And yes, if you have plans this evening, things looking very good. Look at this. Our Luther Family Ford Skycam shows the sun up there at the top of the screen, casting a nice shadow there. Uh, so we're seeing that for most of us. There are some clouds up toward the north, but... By and large, not expecting any impacts for your Friday evening, but the cold may be something to contend with for this evening. Look at how cold we were this morning. 19 in Halleck that morning low, 19 also in Bemidji, 21 that morning low in Grand Forks, 29 in Fargo. Warmest air was south and west where most of those folks woke up to temperatures in the low to mid 30s. Here's where we sit now. 44 Grand Forks, 46 in Fargo. 37 already for our friends there in Langdon. And once the sun sets, I do expect temperatures to drop right off the table. So if you've got Friday night football games or any other Friday evening festivities, you want to bundle up for those. Here's the clouds we're seeing moving into our northern neighborhoods. Notice some green flakes there showing up. Not expecting any moisture from this to be actually reaching the ground. I think it's just too dry here at the surface of the earth. But some clouds moving into our northern neighborhoods. And clouds tonight will also have an effect on just how cool things get overnight. But in Fargo, I do expect temperatures to cool to near that freezing point by 11 p.m. A light northeast wind around 5 miles per hour. Then in Grand Forks, also expecting temperatures down in those lower 30s by 11 o'clock. So again, Friday night football games, make sure to have the heavy blanket and the heavy coat ready if you're watching uh, your team play tonight. But of course, Nache, the weekend is upon us. I'll break down that weekend forecast in a few minutes. All right. Are you rooting for anyone tonight? Uh, I don't have to check the <laughs> rosters and some of the, the, the matchups and see who's, who's looking good tonight, but I'll get back to you. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Nathan. Yeah. A man who is accused of assaulting his 11 year old neighbor pleaded not guilty in Cass County Court today. Larry Baldner is charged with felony aggravated assault, preventing arrest and simple assault. Officers were called out to South Fargo on September 21st for a report of a man who assaulted and choked an 11 year old girl. According to law enforcement, the victim said she was playing basketball with four boys in the duplex next to Baltner's home. The girl also told officers Baltner was yelling at the kids to get off the property and calling out racial slurs. Earlier this week, the Fargo Police Department released their third quarter hate crime report and the case involving Baltner was mentioned. 
A Minneapolis police officer has been charged with manslaughter and vehicular homicide for a crash in July that killed an innocent motorist while the officer was pursuing a stolen vehicle. Authorities say Officer Brian Cummings was driving nearly 80 miles per hour in Minneapolis with his sirens and lights activated when the squad car slammed into a different vehicle, killing a 40 year old man. The officer's personnel files show he joined MPD in 2008 and has received two department awards, but he also had 12 complaints brought against him, all of which were closed with no discipline. The investigation continues this afternoon in Santa Fe, New Mexico, into the movie set shooting on Thursday involving actor Alec Baldwin. He was handling a prop gun that fired, injuring the film's director and killing the film's cinematographer. Jennifer Bjorklin has the details from Los Angeles. An emergency call from the set of a Western movie. A prop gun discharged and mortally wounded cinematographer Helena Hutchins, director of photography on the film Rust. She was taken by helicopter to a hospital, but did not survive. A statement from her agent's office says the 42-year-old Hutchins was a ray of light, always smiling, always hopeful, and all those in her orbit knew what was coming, a star director of photography who would be a force to be reckoned with. Baldwin also offered his first comments this morning on Twitter, saying in part, there are no words to convey my shock and sadness regarding the tragic accident that took the life of Helena Hutchins, a wife, mother, and deeply admired colleague of ours. Also hospitalized from the shooting, director Joel Souza, but he was released today after treatment for undisclosed injuries. The investigators are looking into what kind of projectile came out of the prop gun. The scene, Bonanza Creek Ranch in New Mexico, where Hutchins just a few days ago posted this Instagram video with the caption, one of the perks of shooting a Western is you get to ride horses on your days off. Actor uh, Jeff Mead was on a different project nearby. Sheriffs came down, sit on another set, there was live, a live gun discharge. This has happened before, most notably in 1993. Actor Brandon Lee, son of icon Bruce Lee, was killed by a prop gun on the film The Crow. His death ruled accidental, and strict new protocols for prop firearms have been in place ever since. Jennifer Bjorkland, NBC News, Los Angeles. Rideshare company Lyft is now releasing some startling numbers in its first ever safety report. The 16 page document shows the company received about 4,100 reports of sexual assaults from 2017 through 2019. 360 of them were of rape and there were 10 reported deaths from physical assaults. In recent years, Lyft has rolled out ways to contact 911 through the app and a feature that checks in with drivers or riders if it senses something doesn't seem right. A technical glitch caused several flight cancellations in North Dakota today. Hector International Airport told us they saw seven flight cancellations for arrivals and departures in Fargo. The affected airlines included Delta, United and others. And some flights today still show delays. According to a statement from Delta Airlines, a technical issue affected flights operated by Delta Connection partner SkyWest. Pfizer says kid sized doses of its COVID vaccine are safe and more 90% more than 90% effective for children ages 5 to 11. That's according to trial results the drug maker released today. If approved, shots could go into kids' arms just in time for the holidays. There are roughly 28 million 5 to 11 year olds in the country, and doctors say stopping the growing number of infections in kids is key. The FDA is set to review Pfizer's trial results next week and make a recommendation followed by the CDC. But even if the shots are approved, many parents will still not be convinced. Unless it becomes at the point where it's mandatory in order for them to actually attend school, then then obviously that's going to come down to the wire. 
Another tool in the fight, more than 30 million Americans can now get booster shots of the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines. The CDC will allow mix and matching boosters from any of the vaccines. Just like Pfizer, Moderna boosters are not are now allowed six months after getting the full vaccine dose. For Johnson & Johnson, anyone who got that single dose shot at least two months ago can get a booster. Meanwhile, the North Dakota Department of Health is opening up availability of booster shots to those who are 65 and older, those who have underlying health conditions or other eligibility. State officials say more than 36,000 North Dakotans have already received three doses of a COVID-19 vaccine. The Department of Health also says it placed an order for 10,000 200 doses of Pfizer's vaccine for children pending its approval. Those could be available as soon as November 4th. Governor Tim Walz's office says the state will now begin administering booster shots for those who are eligible. Perm Health is setting the record straight, adding that they would likely like to clarify some things after a recent article was published in the Perm Focus. Perm Health say, says they are not reducing surgeries or turning patients away because of impacts brought on with COVID-19. Perm Health says instead they have had to reschedule surgeries that require an inpatient hospitalization afterward because of bed availability. The hospital says they have seen a significant rise in hospitalizations just because of a general increase in demand, something they say happened even before the recent COVID-19 spike. Millions of Americans are expected to spend billions this Halloween. Experts say it's going to be at an all-time high. And temperatures at this hour already 37 degrees there for our friends in Langdon. Those blues indicating some 30s moving into our region. But we'll talk about how cold things get tonight after the break.